Cool middle-class smartphones, in fact, are not kinda endangered species on the market. Xiaomi, for instance, has almost a bundle of those. A couple of Redmi, Mi 9 Lite and even Mi 9T. Samsung has A51 and A71. Surely it's not hard to find something from Honor, Huawei and, without jokes, from Sony. Recently we met a new player, Realme 6 Pro, quite a promising model from not yet so popular brand. Welcome to Tech Fellas, my name is Bogdan, today I'll tell you about a smartphone that has high chances to become your next daily device. So let's take into it. Traditionally the outer look first, in this term the phone is just fine except for one thing, the frame is plastic, however the rest is glass in pure beauty and grace. Take a look at the back and it's magnificent shimmering, which by the way is covered with tempered Gorilla Glass 5 with an awesome aleophobic coating. The same Gorilla Glass is in the front, there is a protective film glued on top, also aleophobic. The screen is not frameless at all, otherwise that would be too awesome to believe in, but by the standards of the mid-class, the frame size is adequate. Taking a quick look inside the phone, the card drawer will definitely make you feel happy. You can install two SIM cards and a storage card. Nowadays, while the world is only getting used to eSIM, such things are still important for people. In addition, they didn't leave us without mini jack. Music lovers will definitely be glad. With this phone, you can use DHC via Type-C, wireless headphones and classic earbuds with headphone jack that obviously make the sound more detailed. Of course, there's the fingerprint reader on the smartphone and it's very snappy. As you see, it's placed on the right edge of the phone, not under the screen that can upset extremely modern fans, however, I think if it's implemented conveniently, to hell with its secondary novelty. While the smartphone was in our hands, the scanner never let us down. An alternative to that is a face recognition based on the front camera. It works pretty decent too and also fully satisfies any request for speed. In total, device is well assembled, nothing rattles when shaking and doesn't creak when twisting. As for the comfort grab, there's an absolutely standard picture by nowadays. You can use the phone with one hand, but frankly, I cannot call it a pleasant process. But what you'll definitely find comfortable is NFC included in this middle-class smartphone. I won't spare time telling you why it's convenient, so let's better take a deep look into the screen. It is 6.6 .6 inches IPS LCD with Full HD+. After deep analysis, I must say that colors look somewhat oversaturated but not enough to eat out your eyes. There is a simple built-in color corrector, we've got no questions to the sensitivity. As for the viewing angles, all look standard as for liquid crystal. If you take an eagle eye on the screen upon tilting, you will notice that picture is lacking of brightness. Anyway, I don't think that many people really care about the view under a low angle, especially when amulets are basically everywhere. For your piece, upon normal tilt, this screen looks just perfect. Just this shimmering stuff over here is way better. One of its main features is its sweeping frequency of 90 Hz. My sight is not perfect, but it lets me to enjoy the enhanced smoothness of the picture comparing with standard screens. Actually, if I understand correctly, Realme 6 Pro is one of the first smartphones with IPS that has got increased amount of Hz. This is a huge thumbs up, well done China! Cameras also play a significant role in smartphone screens. In case if someone hasn't noticed yet, the front cameras are hole punched in it. Frankly, it looks Looks not that ugly as it could be, but you know, haters gonna hate. There is one unpleasant fact about front cameras and the screen, uneven backlight around the lens, which is especially clearly seen if the background is white. In our sample, this can be also noticed along the chin of the phone. Is it really so bothering? Not at all, just wanted to share as who knows where a picky person is behind that screen. By the way, if you think that such facts are important, let us know that we are doing things right by smashing the like button, dropping a line in comment section or even subscribing. We'll greatly appreciate. As I mentioned cameras, let's jump right into the pics. Front facing one has two lenses, which is wide and ultra wide one with 105 degrees viewing angle. It's awesome for taking photos with big companies, but probably not in this pandemic period. Anyway, in general, the selfies come out not bad. Details are nice and even some lacks of dynamic range can be mended by pretty effective HDR. In general, another thumbs up. 
The main camera allows you to take pictures with zoom in as well as with a standard angle. Super wide angle lens is also included. Basically, this is the full kit for any live situation. What about the quality? The coolest photos, obviously, are the one taken on the main 64 megapixel unit. Here you can enjoy the view of details and the range of the colors. Do not afraid to use HDR for rescuing and drawing out details from the highlights, although adding some of a saturation to the photos. There is a manual mode for Photomaniacs, but also a way to shoot in maximum enhanced resolution for 64 megapixel if you suddenly decide to visit the world of pixels. However, that's effective indeed. The pictures confirm that additional detailing is really happening. Night mode is also here. It manages to pull out details from complete darkness that are not visible for human eye. I would call one disadvantage of this mode. Camera frequently wants to fill the frame with a slightly annoying in warm yellow light. But in total, I would call this smartphone's camera completely okay for insta-blogging and other types of psychological distortions. <coughs> Videos smartphone can take them in 4K. We have no major complaints to this except the lack of stabilization. All other stuff is just fine. Here we have juicy colors and the sharpness is adequate. In general, there is a desire to look at the video content. Now the sound, starting from the speaker. Yes, you've got it right, the lonely lower multimedia speaker. It sings quite pleasant and truly loud, making it possible to deal with notification alerts, ringing out loud even in noisy places, and raise you from the deepest sleep with an alarm clock. The sound in headphones will definitely please the haters of high frequencies, since even the biggest highs fighter in our office didn't find them biting ears too much. So to say, this is easily fixed by equalizing almost every audio player from Play Market. The maximum volume is decent, but do not expect expect for over detailing in the sound. It is standard here, which is completely fine for average music lover. It's time for hardware and benchmark tests. So the chipset here is the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 720G. Adreno 618 stands for graphics. In terms of memory, our samples got 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. In short, device is awesomely quick. In details, it's easily rocking modern complex games and obviously without the slightest glimpse beats absolutely any daily task. So all sorts of apps kinda YouTube, Messenger, video and audio players or email clients will work without issues by default. In World of Tanks Blitz, situation is next. For half an hour gaming with maximum graphics, the FPS number was between 50 and 60, with small drops to 45 in epic moments. What benchmark tests think about Realme 6 Pro is now in front of you. A quick pause will help you to concentrate on the scores and come back here as we are moving to the battery life. The smartphone has 4300 mAh battery. It is boldly enough for one and a half of the day to run on medium loads. Technically, if you forget about all the multimedia stuff and will use smart system algorithm for saving the charge, then even two days of the battery life will no longer be a hidden treasure. Let me grab your attention to the charging time of the device from the accessories out of the box. So, in 10 minutes, instead of 0%, the battery will show you 20 percent. In 20 minutes it will rise up to 42. After 30 minutes you will get 64% and the full charge takes exactly one hour. Summarizing the stuff, Realme 6 Pro is certainly not a device without opponent, but when it appeared on the market, it took away the state of non-alternative from other models, and in particular from the once praised and even now extremely popular Mi 9T. I will definitely recommend Realme 6 Pro for buying, as it rushed extremely positive feelings in my mind, and if your expectations from the middle class are not on a cloud 9, this phone is ready to fulfill your demands. I will leave a couple of links to the internet stores where you can buy this guy in the description box below. And if you like this video, then why not to support our channel by subscribing to it, again hitting the like button and ringing the bell to stay tuned for more cool content. My thanks for watching and cheers!